Chinese folklore, there are phantoms called Jiangshi that are essentially vampires. In Japanese, these same phantoms are called Kyanshis. These vampires are described as being zombie-like or hopping zombies. If you thought the staggering zombies we were accustomed to were bad, imagine a kangaroo version and enjoy trying to sleep again. Typically, these phantoms are known to dress in the official garments of the Qing Dynasty and hop around with their arms outstretched in search of living creatures to kill so they can steal their life force. They are typically active at night or in the depths of caves while resting in coffins during the day. In Phantom Fighter, you play as the lone hero Kenshi with his incompetent, as described in the manual, assistant who serves as an items butler for the main character. Let's see what's up with Phantom Fighter on the NES. Start out in front of a row of buildings in the middle of the night with your incompetent sidekick and you're greeted by a man who tells you something has been pretty weird in town. There's a bunch of ghosts out and about, and boy, it would be pretty great if you could fight them to death. Or back to death, rather. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the gist of how all eight towns, which serve as the levels in this game, begin. It's up to you to choose which building you want to enter first. In each of the eight towns, the buildings are ordered a little differently, but the gist and mission is always the same. The ultimate goal of each town is to collect three crystal balls, which you will obtain from defeating certain Kyanshis, or phantoms, in the buildings. Once you get all three, you are then able to fight the level boss and advance onward. Fighting the phantoms, hence the name Phantom Fighter, is 100% what this game is. You just fight. This is a spooky beat-em-up, basically. You can jump, you can kick, and you can punch. The phantoms you face vary in terms of their height and reach, and each has their own little behavior you'll need to overcome, and it's quite touchy, as in if they touch you at all, you take damage. One big thing you'll need to be aware of is your distance. Be aware of how far your punches and kicks reach, and how far the phantoms can hop. That's the art of this one, keeping your distance and anticipating their next move. In some buildings, you'll need to fight more than one Kyanshi to advance to the next room or to get whatever is kept there, whether it be a special item or a crystal ball. You want to be collecting scrolls as well, which you get the same way you do everything else, kicking phantom butt. Once you have a certain amount, you can buy new attacks like a double punch or double kick to dish out more damage. This adds a little more to the game than it really needs. It's quite repetitive. It's eight stages of enter a town, go building to building, fight some bouncing phantoms, find the boss, repeat. All this while you deal with the game's slow and stiff controls. Luckily, there is a password system here, so that's nice. You won't need to do all of this in one sitting, which is good, because for a first timer it could take several hours to get through once you take your lumps. There is also a house in each town that will allow you to heal up all the way once you defeat the Kanshi there, so you can keep revisiting that spot to get a full health bar before you go back to doing ghost karate. You can also get some special limited use items like a sword, amulet, or a mirror, but you can't put those to use until you try to leave and then your sidekick asks if you'd like to use them. It's a strange way to do things. You would think a sword would totally own over your regular punches and kicks, but it does very little damage and breaks just after a handful of hits. The mirror just staggers the enemies and can come in handy if you're about to take a hit, but overall you'll be relying on your simple punches and kicks to put those bouncing undead nuisances to rest. All in all, Phantom Fighter isn't terrible. The premise of martial artsing bouncing zombies is kind of fun, especially since it's derived from real folklore. The biggest complaint here is the tedium of the controls. You can find yourself in situations where you can't move without taking damage, and other times where you swear you were close enough to connect a hit. Once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad, but it's just so repetitive.
The Japanese version of the game is titled Reigen Doshi and is based on a Japanese film called Mr. Vampire, a breakthrough classic in the Jianshi genre. Say that five times real fast. It spun a few sequels too, with Mr. Vampire 2, 3, and 4. Mr. Vampire 2 received its own Famicom game titled Kianchi's 2, but it was published by Taito and is unrelated to Phantom Fighter. I don't know much else about this one and could not find an English language patch. Alright, that does it for this one. Look out for hopping zombie vampires, and thanks for watching.